4 o'clock. I'm Sandy Kelly trying to help you make it through the tail end of the day. And I do have a lot of easy songs that should smooth the way a little bit. I think a lot of the way I was raised definitely uh, has determined the way I deal with people. I never felt especially uh, all that necessary to my parents. Like, I don't think they really wanted a kid. They are professional business people and they work their butts off. And a child was, I think, a bit of an imposition. So I always felt like I was the pain in the ass kid. Oh, don't think about it! Do it! Don't talk about it! Do it! Do it! I read somewhere you were hyperactive as a child, is that correct? Yeah. Me, I went and got myself thrown out of schools. Uh, what was done for me was I was given anti-hyperactive medication in the form of a drug called Ritalin. And uh, I took that for many years and it made me uh, not eat and sit very quietly in class grinding my teeth. And after that, what happened after that? I threw the pills out, got really wild, started lifting weights, got very aggressive and got into uh, hard rock music. <laughs> February 21, 1983. Last night we played in Vienna, Austria. It was really bad for me. A guy took the microphone from me, called me a pig and bashed me in the mouth with it. People spat at me, hit me in the face. One guy burned me a few times with a cigar. I got these big burns on my leg. Some guy got on stage and the bouncers were trying to hit him. I got between them to try to save the guy and for my trouble the guy hauled off and punched me in the jaw. After that it got wild. The police came and the crowd beat the shit out of them. The police dog too. In the, in the book you, uh, sort of, you come across as uh, almost like a solitary man, I think. Well, that's a, good, that's a good description of what I am. I employ about, got six people at my office and there's all kind of sound people and management and all these people who either, I either pay a salary to or they get a percentage of what I do monetarily uh, but I don't really know them outside of the fact that I work with them and I don't really have any close friends and I'm not looking for any so I'm uh, very solitary, that's true Why aren't you looking for any? Um, that's not interested I, I got a lot to do and I have priorities and a close friendship isn't one of them. That's why I like faxing. That's why I like email. That's why I like the internet. Get the information and go. You don't have to say, hi, how are you? How's your dog? Oh, really? That's great. How are you? I don't care how you are. If you're alive enough to send the fax, that's all we need. The only people I associate myself with are people who really kick a lot of ass and get a lot of stuff happening. Mm. Like anybody I hang around with are someone who is as busy as I am. And every once in a while those little pockets of downtime intersect. Like my friend Rick Rubin, the producer, he's mm. also my label partner for a label that we have together. We get together about once a month for lunch. Mm -hmm. It's about all the time we have. And it's really great when we have that time to tell each other what's going on because I'm actually interested in a guy who's producing the Chili Peppers and ACDC at the same time in the same studio, in two different studios down the hall from each other. He goes 12 to 4 with ACDC, 4 to 12 with the Chili Peppers. Now that is a guy who interests me. Mm -hmm. What doesn't interest me is neurotic boys complaining about their girlfriends. So this, this work ethic that you have is very important to you. It's all I've got. It's the only thing that I'm interested in is the work. I don't have a girlfriend, I don't have a drug addiction to keep me busy, I don't have a, uh, a taste for nightclubs and fast cars, so I work. And I enjoy the work that I do. I'm working with artists who I admire, whose work I love very much and means a lot to me. I mean, I work with Alan Vega, I work with Iggy Pop, I work with TV Smith, you know, I do stuff with the band Suicide, I work with all these tremendous people, you know, people who raised me musically. And I get to edit them, release their records, work with them. It's an honor. So it's lunchtime now? 
Oh, it's always lunchtime. Time is money, babe. Let's do it. Ask away. Where are we now? You are in the nerve center, the war room. Hello, this is Henry Rollins. Hey, what's going on? I think so. I, I think after that, he might get a little bit cantankerous or... I mean, who wants to sit in front of a camera for three hours? Here's some of the books that we put out. Uh, books by me. And uh, books by other people. This is a photographer who we work with named Glenn Friedman. And uh, we are doing his photo book. There's me. And the, the book has a, a bad word on the title. So we just call it You Heroes. <gasps> Alan Vega. The great Alan Vega. We are his publisher and very proud to be so. Um, the song, uh, song lyrics? Yes, his lyric book. Uh -huh. uh, Bill Shields, he's a Vietnam veteran whose uh, poetry we publish. Oh, yeah. This is the uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds tour, the tour book, the photo book by uh, Peter Milne. And this is the American edition of it. We are his publisher for America. Lots of other stuff, but it's just more books and, and then, stuff. And CDs, too? You, do, you put out CDs, too? Yeah, but uh, none of them are back from the plant yet. That company is very new, and the stuff will be back in about a week. Do it, 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 do it. It's just nothing but priority. You've got so much time on the planet. What are you going to do with your time? Do you have the guts to do amazing stuff and do whatever it takes to realize your vision and have 100% determination? Or are you just going to go the way of all these people who fill stadiums and watch U2 every year? Uh, maybe if you had a really nice girlfriend, you'd, you'd have other priorities. Maybe I would. <laughs> and quite honestly, I wouldn't mind having your girlfriend. Oh. I've forgotten what it's like. I haven't had a girlfriend since 1988 or something. Oh my God. Ever since then, it's just been little hit-and-run adult excursions. <laughs> Quite honestly, most women bore me. You know, if mm. they smoke, I'm turned off. If they drink, I'm out of there. Uh, if they're stupid, I'm bored. If they're mean, I'm bored. If they're trying to use me, I'm out of there. So I guess I'm very picky. If they don't work out, I'm not interested. <laughs> if the mind is lazy and the body's lazy, who cares? You mean working out, uh, physically that's working right. out? Oh, that's right. If they're not in shape, hey. Go be fat on someone else's time. I'm a musician. Uh, it's a pretty dubious term when you listen to the way I sing, but um, I'm in the music business, and there's a lot of burnouts and a lot of crooks and a lot of dope addicts and a lot of fakes in that business, but I'm not one of those. And you don't consider yourself a really great musician, I understand from your own words. No, I, I have the worst time you'll ever see. Horrible. So what's your talent? According to yourself, I know it. I am able to go for it with no restraint. To express myself without any restraint. That's my talent. Like every nut job holding a paper cup with two quarters in it on the street corner down below here. You know, you see him walking down the street going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, that's what I can do.
Step back Step back Oh Fall down Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you motherfucker!